Hello everybody, Pastor Reed of Online Bible Church, and I'm so glad that you've joined me today for a little video on discussing the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, this is something that a lot of Christians have a hard time with. They have a hard time wrapping their heads around the idea that God can be three and one at the same time. Paul says, great is the mystery of godliness. And so who God is, what God is, is a mystery. We are mere mortals. We cannot fully comprehend and understand God in his completeness. We believe it by faith based on what God has revealed to us in his word. And um, we're going to start with the definition, the classical definition of the Trinity, and that is that there is one God, that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost is each God, and that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost are each a distinct person. Now, there is a wide range of Trinitarian teachings. I have heard um, teachings on the Trinity ranging from oneness all the way to tritheistic. And oneness on one hand, uh, some of the Pentecostals believe in a oneness doctrine, which is that there is not three persons in the Trinity. There is one divine person, and that person is Jesus Christ. I disagree with that teaching. On the other end of the spectrum is flat-out tritheism. I believe Finus Dake um, was big on, he never called it tritheism, but he uh, believed in three separate uh, thrones and so on and so forth. And so from one end of the spectrum, oneness all the way through to um, tritheism. And of course, I reject tritheism as well. I lie somewhere in the middle. Um, there's also the idea of uh, binatary, and that God is not three, but God is in fact two. And this is what um, Garner Ted Armstrong taught, that there was the Father and the Son, but the Spirit is not a person. Uh, and he took a lot of that doctrine from um, the introductions and the greetings in uh, a lot of Paul's epistles, where he would say, I greet you in in the fa grace be unto you, um, in the Father, God our Father, and Jesus Christ, and that the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost was not mentioned, and therefore um, the Holy Spirit is not a person. Again, I disagree with that. Um, if you want to see an example of all three persons in the Godhead existing simultaneously, you can look at Jesus' baptism. Um, the Father was the voice from heaven. Uh, the Son was in the water being baptized, and the Holy Spirit descended like a dove. There is all three uh, persons, uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, um, existing at the same time. Um, so that, that contradicts the teachings of oneness, that uh, there's one divine person, and that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are modes of the same God, but um, are not distinct persons that are uh, that exist co uh, at the same time, and so um, we can also look at the idea that we ourselves we're not a trinity, but we have what's called a trichotomy. We are made up of body, which is our physical flesh, body, soul, and spirit. Now, the distinction between the soul and the spirit is the soul is your animating force. Your soul is uh, who you are, your character, your moral character. Your soul is eternal. Your spirit is what connects you with God. Now, when you're born, your spirit is dead. Um, when you uh, get saved and you uh, trust in the gospel, the blood of Jesus Christ for your sins, your spirit intertwines with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1 and 13 says um, that when we believe, when we trust, um, we are sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. And so the Spirit of God comes and dwells within us. And that is part of our spirit. And so we are not a trinity, but we are a trichotomy. And um, the idea is that um, that would also apply to God. That the soul of God is the Father, the body of God is the Son, 
and the Spirit of God is the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. Um, that is not really an adequate way to describe it because God is um, so much greater than we are. We are just mortals. God is, is an eternal, omnipotent, um, omnipresent force. Uh, God is spirit. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And so again, um, our spirit mixes with the Holy Spirit, and they become one. And so when we worship God, we worship God with our spirit and with his spirit. And so um, I'm hoping that this kind of helps you understand a little bit about the doctrine of the Trinity. It's, it's a very difficult doctrine to understand because it's so far and away from what we can experience. It's basically like being in a two-dimensional world and all of a sudden you're seeing 3D. I mean, God is, is so much greater than what we can comprehend. And so we can't really understand all that there is to know about God. But we do know um, in the Old Testament, especially, especially in the book of Isaiah, um, it talks about one God. We know um, the Shema, the Jewish Shema, Deuteronomy 6, 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. In Mark, Jesus quotes that. That's actually the first commandment that he says is that uh, uh, it is written, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And so he was quoting the Shema. And so we know that God is one. God has to be one God. Um, and all through the Old Testament, there's many, many verses that indicate one God. I am alone, so on and so forth. But yet we see that God is also three persons. And so how that happens, how that works, we can't really understand, but we believe it by faith because um, it is uh, taught in the Bible. Now, the, the word Trinity does not actually appear in the Bible, but there is another word that is used that essentially means God in his completeness, and it's used three times in Scripture, and that is the word Godhead. Colossians 2 and 9 says that um, in him, talking about Jesus, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And so that is a verse that points towards um, Jesus being divine, the divinity of Jesus, that Jesus was God manifest in flesh. And so um, we understand that, that, um, that Jesus Christ was God and that God came to earth uh, veiled in flesh and walked the earth and died for our sins um, as Jesus Christ. And so... Um, there's another verse in 1 John 5, 7, I believe. Now, you have to look at this verse in the King James Version. If you look at it in any other version, the verse is going to be watered down and um, and, and kind of um, removed some of it. But essentially, 1 John 5, 7 teaches that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, um, the Son, and the Spirit. And so, and, and then it also goes on to say that these three are one. They're not necessarily agreeing in one, as some uh, modern translations say, but they are in fact one. So how God can be three and one at the same time, I have no idea, but I believe it by faith. So I'm hoping that this video helps you to understand a little bit about it and that God is uh, made up of three parts the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But yet all three, they are distinct from one another. All three are eternal, co-eternal. They're co-equal. Uh, they exist simultaneously, despite what the oneness teaches. Um, and they are all one God. That's the best way I can explain it. Um, maybe kind of like an egg. Let's let's use the egg analogy. Um, you have the, the yolk you have the, uh, the, the yellow part of the egg, and you have the shell of the egg. It's one egg, but yet it's made up of three parts. And so I'm hoping that helps you understand it a little better. If not, 
I'm sorry. I hope that I didn't leave you with more questions than answers, but that's the best I can do on this very deep uh, theological uh, topic. And of course, there are studies, and you can look them up on YouTube, that go on for hours attempting to discuss this. I've even heard debates between oneness believers and um, Trinitarian believers. And, and um, this is a very, very big topic. And if you ask three, let's say you ask 10 pastors about the Trinity, you will probably get 10 different answers because what God wants us to know is found in his word. If God doesn't tell us something in his word, then it's not something we really need to worry about. It's not something that's important. It's not something that's necessary. We just believe it by faith. And so we believe the Trinity, uh, that God is three and one. Uh, we believe that by faith. And how that is, I have no idea. But I'm hoping this helps you out a little bit. So until next time, God bless.